We're going to do another Newton's second law problem in one dimension by adding some complexity to the previous problem. So we had Alice hanging onto a rope being pulled up by a wench. Now we're going to add that the rope is also attached to a 20 kilogram box that is hanging below her. What is the tension in the second section of rope? Well, the first thing is always to draw a picture. So I have one here. Here's the rope. Alice is hanging onto it, and it is also attached to a box. Note that the tension in the two sections of rope are different. The tension is everywhere the same in our tension model, only between two points of contact between objects with mass. So there's the tension above between the wench and Alice, and the tension below between Alice and the box, and they will have different magnitudes. I want to apply physics to solve this problem, and the physics I'm going to use is Newton's second law. Newton's second law only deals with one object. I have two objects here, but I can't deal with both at the same time. I have to choose just one. So my first step is to isolate one object of mass m, and I've identified the mass of the object of m sub a. I have a couple objects, so I use a subscript a for Alice to distinguish it from the mass of the box. Next is to find all the forces on that one object. Well, one of the forces is the tension due to the rope going up. I've identified that as T1. It has a magnitude T, T sub 1, and it is pointing up. And I also have just identified here that I know the magnitude of that tension, and it's 1500 newtons. But there are other forces on here. There's also the tension of the rope going down. I've identified that as T sub 2. It has a magnitude T sub 2 going down, and I don't know what it is. Note that often you'll have objects with multiple ropes or wires going away from the object. You're going to have a tension force for every wire or rope that passes through your circle around your object. I have one more force, that's gravity, and it has a magnitude of the mass of Alice times the acceleration due to gravity, and that force is down. Again, I have my subscript, m sub a, because I want to make sure I don't confuse that with the other mass in the problem. So now I want to sum the vectors using a free body diagram. My free, free body diagram has a dot representing my object, and my forces in appropriate directions with their tails on the point representing the object. Tension 1 is up, tension 2, and the force due to gravity is down. And I have a coordinate system for my free body diagram, and I've decided to have the positive axis up. Now I want to sum these vectors, and in one dimension, I have an easy convention where the sign represents the direction of the vector. So I have a positive magnitude t1 added to a negative magnitude t2 added to a negative mass of Alice times the acceleration due to gravity. The vector sum of these forces is equal to the mass of Alice times the acceleration of Alice. So I've made it very clear with my subscripts that this is the mass of Alice times the acceleration of Alice. So this gives me a handy scalar equation now. T1 minus T2 minus mass of Alice times G is equal to the mass of Alice times the acceleration of Alice. I know the tension of 1. I know the mass of Alice and G. I don't know the tension in 2, that's what I'm trying to find. I also don't know the acceleration of Alice. I have two unknowns and only one equation. I need the same number of linearly independent equations as I have unknowns to be able to solve. But that's okay, because I have another object in my problem, the box, that I can apply Newton's second law to. I have my picture, and now I'm going to isolate another object of mass m. So now we need all the forces on that one object. So I isolate it, draw a circle around it. It has some mass. There's only one rope attached to it, which means there's only one tension acting on the box. It's the tension 2. is a magnitude T2. Note that on the box, this tension force is directed up because it goes along the line away from the object. And in this case, we're looking, we've isolated our object, which is the box. There's also the force due to gravity on the box. It has a magnitude of the mass of the box times the acceleration due to gravity. So I've identified that. It's a mass of b, and it is directed down. 
So now I need to sum the vectors, use a free body diagram, my vectors in appropriate directions away from my point, I've labeled them, I need a coordinate system, I've identified the positive direction to be up, and now I need to sum these vectors in one dimension, there's a handy notation where the sign indicates the direction of the vector, so I have a positive T2 added to a negative magnitude of the gravitational force, which is the mass of the box times G. This is equal to the mass of that one object, mass of the box, times the acceleration of that one object. So I've identified those specifically here with subscripts B for the box. Does this give me enough to solve the problem? From before, I had this relationship and I've brought it back, and now I have a new relationship. So what do I know and what do I not know? I know the tension one, mass, of A and mass of B. I was told the box is 20 kilograms. I also know the acceleration due to gravity. I don't know tension in two, that's what I'm trying to find. And I don't know the acceleration of Alice or the acceleration of the box. So now I have two equations, but I have three unknowns. And so I don't have enough to solve. Can I come up with something from the problem that will tell me a relationship between the accelerations? In our tension model, the length of rope never changes, meaning that Alice and the box move together with the same distance apart all the time. Whatever acceleration Alice has, the box will have the same acceleration. I just set equal to sum A without a subscript. Now, if that's not immediately obvious, then let me walk you through it. We assume, given our model, that they're always a fixed distance apart the length doesn't change, and they're only moving in one dimension. That means any infinitesimal step of Alice will be the same infinitesimal step of the box. Now this happens over some infinitesimal time, so I can divide both sides by that time dt. So I have a ratio of, of differentials here, assuming my position functions of Alice and the box are well-defined in a calculus way. This ratio of differentials is then the derivatives. So this tells us that the derivatives are equal. I can then differentiate this equation again, and that tells me that their second derivatives are equal. And that's equal to the acceleration, so this tells me that their accelerations are the same. I know you hear physics instructors say a lot that you're not supposed to be hunting for equations, but you don't listen to them because hunting for equations has served you so well. I'd like to point out that there was no equation here. You had to go into the context of the problem, use your picture, use the words of the problem, use your coordinate system to come up with a relationship between these accelerations. And that relationship isn't going to be the same for every problem. It's not a given that the accelerations are going to be equal. And there is no equation that is going to give you that answer. You have to go into your problem with your coordinate system to extract logically what those relationships are. But now that we have that relationship, we can solve because we have three equations and three unknowns. I've taken this relationship and just solved for T2, and then I substituted T2 into this first equation. Now you may ask, wait, aren't we trying to solve for T2? And that's right, but I'm going to solve for both T sub 2 as well as the acceleration. And it just seems to me this is probably easier than trying to substitute for the acceleration. It just looked that way to me. So I've substituted T sub 2 into the first equation. I get this relationship. The first thing I'm going to do is distribute the negative sign through those two terms. Now I want to solve for the acceleration. So I'm going to move that over to the other side. And then I'm going to factor out the g out of those two terms. So I've also factored out the negative sign, and then I have both of the acceleration terms on the other side. And so now I'm going to factor out the a from those two terms, and then divide both sides by m sub a plus m sub b. Note that I've never put in any numbers. That's important, because once I put in any numbers, I lose the physics. These terms aren't just letters to me, they have meaning. This is the tension that the wench is putting on the rope. Here's the sum of the masses, the acceleration. Here's also the sum of both masses. So at this point, before I plug in numbers, I can check to see whether this makes sense given the context of the problem. This is the tension provided by the wench, 
and this represents total gravitational force on the system. Notice that if T1 is greater than that combined gravitational force, then this difference is positive and A is positive, which makes sense given my coordinate system, it's going to accelerate up if the tension here is larger. If the combined force of gravity is larger than the tension provided by the wench, then the acceleration is negative, which means given my coordinate system, it's going to accelerate down. That makes sense as well. And of course, also, if I increase either of the masses, my acceleration is going to go down. So now I can plug in numbers. Again, I really don't need a calculator here. 1500 minus 1200 is 300 divided by 120. Divide top and bottom by three, I get 10 fourths or five halves or 2.5 meters per second squared. Again, I like to do as much simple algebra on paper as possible to prevent any calculation errors. Now, this is, isn't what I wanted. What I wanted was the tension. Here, I'm going to factor out the mass of the box times the acceleration due to gravity times the acceleration of the system. And so the mass of the box is 20 times 12.5 and gives me finally the tension, 250 newtons. It's not ridiculously large or small. We can say that that makes sense as well.